The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host. Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OA, the host of Last Three Brain Cells, and the host of Between Taramina's on Oriented Intelligence. I'd like to welcome those on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube. We got three football coaches this week we're going to talk to. Um, obviously, we also got breaking news out of Farmington, of course, with Natalie Nowak being hired as the New York girls coach at Farmington. So we'll also break that down if we have some time today. Um, let's start our um, three coaches. Three coaches football interviews. We got the um, we we're gonna go from the red first, then the blue, and then the white. So we're gonna start with West Bloomfield. Um, we got new coach Jack Hilbers who takes over the um, reins at West Bloomfield. Coach, welcome, welcome to the podcast. A frequent interviewer of during Media Day. Hey, thank you, Saints. It's just great to be here and uh, sit down and talk. Appreciate you giving me the time. Um, when you look at West Bloomfield, um, last season. Eight and two, four and one. The red, um, eighty three and twenty one since twenty fourteen. Um, and you've been there for all of it. Of course, you've been through the coaching changes, of course, with Ron, and then of course Tyrese. Now, how does it feel being the head coach of the Lakers? You know, I guess um, the first easy answer would be kind of surreal. You know what I mean? It just it, it feels like reality just because of you know the day to day workload, but. I still am wondering, you know, in a couple weeks when we hit the double days and, you know, we're going to scrimmage and we're playing like, you know, I I just feel like, you know, it's going to kind of hit me even more and more as as the closer we get to the season. So it's a it's a weird combination of being really excited and just, I guess, kind of nervous that you just want to, you know, keep a good thing going that we've had here. Um, Talk about obviously 83 and 21 since 2014. How does that feel? I mean, it feels really good. I mean, we we've been we've been really lucky. We've had some really good players that uh, that makes people like me look a little bit smarter. Anytime you got you got some talented kids that are coachable, it makes coaches look better. You know, just point blank. So um, we've been really fortunate in that regard and blessed, and we know it. Um, obviously, I want to talk a little something last year. Um, you took you when you read the selection show. Um, I want to get your personal thoughts. And your players' thoughts about having to play Detroit Cast Tech in the first round. When I look at the bracket and all that last year, it didn't make geographical sense that you guys had to play Detroit Cast Tech last year. And it ended up not being a good result for you guys, um, losing that 138-13. So what was your thoughts, your thought process, your players' thought process about having to play that? You know, it, it, you kind of hit them all there. Like, it, it might not make geographical sense. You look at the maps and what they say they try to do. They, I just, it didn't make logical sense. But at the same time, like, the kids were pretty excited. They know the challenge of playing uh, Detroit Cast Tech, and they were pretty pumped about it. Um, you know, because we have, you know, pretty ambitious goals because we like to, I guess, I guess set pretty high bars for ourselves and a, a high standard and we know to reach those goals you're gonna have to beat really good teams and we play a ton of them obviously in the oaa red but you know to beat our to reach our goal anyway we had to go through cast tech or belleville or chip or dakota whoever the bracket falls you know what i mean so you know you're gonna play a good team might as well be week one at home uh just you know obviously didn't go our way um, obviously when you look at, of course, last season, offensively, you scored 321 points defensively you allowed 195. Um, you know, when you look at, obviously you got a lot of proven players coming back. You do return the quarterback in Raekwon Nance. Um, so talk about how important it's having a, um, a very experienced, talented player like Raekwon coming back. Obviously last year he missed some time with injury. Um, so talk about how important Raekwon is to your offense. Yeah, so you're talking about a kid who's like, uh, and he goes by Rick, but that's what most of us call him. But uh, he uh, he got brought up about halfway through his freshman year, which was the shortened COVID year, and we went on the the run through the playoffs and won the state title. And he was there taking every scout team reps and about a third of the offensive reps. So you know, you get into this year, he knows our playbook as good as I do, and our offensive coordinator Ken Rise does. Like he knows our stuff. Uh, and I don't just mean, you know, the quarterback and receivers, you know, he calls every single protection. He calls, he audibles our run pl- plays. If, you know, we get a different front than we think we're going to get, so, you know, stuff like that. 
So, I mean, as a coach, my gosh, like you're fortunate when you have a guy like that that just knows your stuff inside out. Or like, you know, if you're in the in the heat of it and you're calling a play and for some reason you get it flipped in your head and you, you got the, the formation flipped right instead of left, he'll correct it because he knows what it's supposed to be. Um, but, you know, that's just from years of repetition and practice and the kid kind of putting in the time. Talk about, obviously, you look at the um, – you look at, of course – How's your running back situation? Of course, um, Jaden Alos takes over that reign. Um, how's that running back situation going along with your receivers? Uh, so the the running backs is probably going to be a little bit of a committee. Like we had some guys last year that were sophomores that played some, and in their when they had their opportunities, we thought they did a really good job. Uh, and that's kind of Josh Tate and Brody Pecor. They were two sophomores. Brody ended up playing some quarterback when Rick broke his hand. Uh, but those guys, they got a ton of reps as a sophomores, and some of it was in practice. And then uh, I think Josh Tate ended up starting our homecoming game against Lake Orion and had a really like kid was itching just to play. And he went out there and took, uh, you know, every opportunity he got, had a really good game. And his role kind of grew from that moment forward. So, you know, we think he's ready to go. Um, and, you know, he's been working his tail off and. We're kind of excited just to see what he can do because uh, we've been, you know, I, I talked about being really blessed and lucky with the kids we've gotten. Our running back position has been, I mean, generational luck that we've had there when you go to Donovan Edwards, Dylan Tatum, Kenneth Jones in a row. Like that's that's not normal and realistic for no, like the high school program to expect, you know what I mean? So I try to be careful to, I guess, temper our expectations, you know, be fair to the kids like. The kid's working his butt off. We think he's going to be a really good player, but, you know, it's not every day or every year or every 10 years that you get a run of kids like that. Um, obviously, you're, how's your – um? you look at, of course, your wide receiving position, of course. You did get a transfer in Cameron Flowers that came up from Ann Arbor Huron. Um, yep. Also, Elijah Durham's been one name I've been mentioned a little bit. Um. But when you look at your defense, I mean, obviously you do return your linebackers – are going to be one of your strengths. Obviously, you have Kari Jackson coming back. You also have players in the secondary like Jimmy Benjamin, um, Bryce Rowe, and Nigel Dutton coming back. I mean, like, talk about your defense a little bit. Yeah, so kind of all those things I said about Rick as a quarterback, we have about four of those guys on defense. You mentioned them, like, Kari Jackson, he's the quarterback of our defense. He's out, he's out there calling every passing strength and coverage based on formation all summer. Uh, Brandon Davis Swain does that for us on the D-line. Jameer Benjamin in the back cast. And you're talking about uh, Kari and Brandon are going to be two four-year varsity players, right? Jameer Benjamin is going to be a three-year varsity starter. Uh, and the experience is just so valuable. Like the, the point, I guess, in our teaching progression where we can pick up with those guys is just so much further along. It's like our starting point was – so much farther than it normally is. So we feel like, you know, we're at a pretty good place in terms of the X's and O's and the mental installation of football. And obviously we got to do the physical part in a couple of weeks when we can get after it. But uh, I don't know, just having those guys that, that caliber of a player and a kid that have been around for a while, it um, makes us pretty lucky. Talk about obviously your program strength, your JV, your freshman programs. Talk about that a little bit before we break down the schedules. So, I mean, we, we like our, where our, our uh, younger levels are at right now. Like, we've been practicing uh, our, uh, our football camp, like our, our West Bloomfield football camp. JV and Varsity have been together, you know, for our lifts. We keep them um, together because we want to make sure that uh, those guys are all, like, learning the same lifts, the same terminology, you know, the same X's and O's, all the same stuff, right? Um, I've had pretty good numbers at the lower levels the last few years. I know our JV kind of took some lumps last year. They had uh, a couple injuries, but those kids worked pretty hard. Um, and I think they're going to be good contributors on, on the varsity team. And we had a ton of sophomores up on varsity last year, which can obviously hurt your, your depth at the lower levels. But we're kind of looking at them to have some pretty strong years. Our numbers have been really good in the lower levels. And, you know, we kind of hope to, I guess, set the level of expectation for our program with them. Um, of course, let's break down the schedule. Obviously, when you look at you're in the red. Um, so what I do, what I what I did with the other coaches when I talked to them was break down your initial thoughts on each team, um, and then we'll talk your non-conference. Um, let's start with the um, division first. Let's talk. What's your thoughts about the Oxford Wildcats? 
Uh, you, you talk about Oxford, you're talking about kids that are tough as nails. And ever since, you know, Coach Line got there and they've kind of shifted their, um, I guess, offensive identity and philosophy. Like, I know the guy played in the NFL and with, was with Drew Brees a few years with the Saints. And, like, I can see, like, um, so I guess some of that influence in their offense with the way they – they run their play action and they, they change the uh, strength of their formations. And they can move guys around and the flexibility they've had with some of their players. And like I said, those kids are just tough as nails. Um, we were able to, I don't know, we had a pretty good game plan against them last year, kind of jumped up early. We were able to kind of, I guess, cruise a little bit more than you normally would against a team like them. But it's usually just an absolute dogfight and a battle. Cause like I said, those kids, man, they, they don't back down from anybody. Stony Creek. Oh man, they give us fits too. Just like with their, uh, those two kids they had last year, number 40 and number nine, I couldn't tell you their names, but they could like lift the entire weight room. I bet. <laughs> and with the way they run power, like six or seven different ways. And, uh, they'll leak some guys out into the flats and their RPO off of their, their run game. They just really controlled the clock and did a really good job. Exceptionally well coached guys. Um, and yeah, that was, that was an absolute battle there. I think, at the start of the second quarter, we had about 37 seconds of time of possession, and it was a 10-3 to 3 game. I mean, like, that was – yeah, the, he, uh, Coach Merlo, he does a good job. Adams. Well, no, that's uh, – the last few years been, I guess, the thorn in our side. They've, they've been very talented. They can, you know, match us um, athletically and physically. And uh, we, we know we have against a lot of teams – a lot of times an athletic and a speed advantage and Adams has been able to kind of match us. And to be honest, they have taken it to us for what three of the last four times we played or two of the last three times we played really took it to us. Um, and they've, they've had a uh, really good classes of kids the last couple of years. And obviously their quarterback that that's not there anymore. Probably took a lot of the attention and deservedly so because he was unbelievable. But yep, Parker Pico. They were, yeah, Parker Pico is a, one of the better high school players that you'll see. Uh, but they are far more than him. So like we we know that like yeah sure that, that quarterback's finally gone. It's like yeah great, but like that's a machine that they run over there. The Veer. those kids are in the right spots, and they have some other kids that can really play too. So they they're a, they're a really tough matchup for us. Now, a lot of people look at this rivalry. Um, I want to get your thoughts, but it's starting to become a really good rivalry. I'm um, Clarkston. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I, we were, I was talking with the kids a couple weeks ago. I can't find the last time we won at Clarkston High School. It's at least 1982. That's a while. Um, so for the last maybe eight or nine years, we've traded back and forth with them. The home teams won every game. It's always been really, really close. Um, and obviously the state title game was a neutral game that they, they got us. Yeah, 3-2, I really, remember that. 3-2, to two, yeah. Again, really, really close. Um, they've just been battles. And, I mean, those kids, I mean, they don't give up either. Like, I think last year we, we had like a 17-point lead, started the fourth quarter. And I might be off a little bit with that, but semi-comfortable. You know what I mean? They just stuck to their guns, stuck to their stuff kept feeding Ethan Clark and he popped a few and like we ended up holding on for dear life at the end. Um, and we were fortunate enough to walk away with a win, but you know, we're going up there. We're playing on the road this year. And like I said, it's been at least 40 years and it could be further because I, I can't find in our, our records who was the home team back then. I just know we happened to beat them in 81 and 82. So maybe one of them was on the road, but uh, like it's been at least since then, since we've won there. Lake Orion. Now, <laughs> I'm not just saying this because I'm talking to you either. I, I think uh, Lake Orion is like a team that like we're a little bit as a coaching staff, we're a little bit afraid of. We think they are ready to kind of explode and like take off. Like they've been kind of, you've seen their younger levels have been stronger and stronger. Uh, the program strength and numbers are good. And I think you guys uh, up in Lake Orion have some really good players. And the running back's an absolute stud. Um, and I've seen, I coach track. So I see the guys out there that are throwing shot and disc that are out there running in the relays and doing all these events and they got some athletes and, you know, we got our eyes on them because we think they're going to be really tough. When you look at a course and then we look at your non-conference, of course you do open up the Wayne state against Chippewa Valley. Um, 
what's your initial thoughts early when you play the think about playing the Big Reds and Coach Scott Merchant's team? I mean, their, their success, I think, kind of uh, stands, you know, explains itself and stands like on its own. Like, you don't have to go into like I guess the details of how good they've been. Cause they've been good for a long time, probably, you know, I guess longer than we've been uh, a power around here. Uh, they can match us athletically. They can match us strength wise. I got a couple four year starters on the O and D line that are going to be problems, both sides of the football. Um, you know, they're fast. They got a quarterback who's, I think he's in his third year as a starter. It's hard to keep track of all the shoesters over there. I don't know how many more they got left. I think this is the last one. I think it's the last one, right? But mm-hmm. I thought the last one was, <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's been there. He's yeah. played in big games. You know what I mean? So everything we've talked about our kids being experienced, well, they got that too. Um, so, I mean, it's a challenge, you know, it, it's funny back, like back in March when I first got the job, you know, my dad calls me, he's all happy, he's excited. And then 30 seconds into the conversation, he goes, wait a second, why are you guys playing Chippewa Valley week one? Why'd you do that? <laughs> I was like, I don't know. who knows but uh like i said earlier to get where we want to be you have to be able to beat really good teams and they're a really good team and they're going to be ready to go week one so i just hope we're uh we're there to match it in week two you get to play groves um which is that'll be another interesting matchup obviously you know groves um always been saw in our coach flarity um talk about groves a little bit yeah, you said it. They've always been solid uh, with Coach Flaherty there, and it's like not a you know a little blip. It's like I don't know how long he's been there. You might know Sam, twenty five years, maybe twenty twenty five years, and he is an intense guy. And you can see his team just matches it, man. Like they uh, they are physical, they are good at their stuff. Um, you know, they've we've played them not every year, but you know, on and off over the years, and it's always a battle, just mm-hmm. always a battle, just because. You know, they, they're going to run their, their 44, and they're going to be in their run fits, and they just, they don't give you an inch. They scheme you up. They game plan you really good. On the other side of the ball, they got a lot of variety with their run game and their play action and just a lot of different wrinkles. That you just got to be on top of your game when you play them. Um, of course, let's, um, before I talk a and I want to talk Oak Park. I mean, you played them last game of the year, week nine. Um, talk about Oak Park a little bit. So uh, to be honest with you, you know, it's our week nine game. It's probably the team I know the least about. We used to play them a little bit more and I had a better, like, I guess, grasp of their roster um, and kind of what they had coming up. And it's been a couple of years since we played them. And I guess I don't have an idea of what they got. So in a way where I feel like we're kind of lucky, we're going to have a little bit of time to watch their body at work and see where they're at as a program. But, you know, I guess Coach Carter's success is, you know, like it speaks for itself also. You know what I mean? The guy's been around the block a lot longer than I have. So he's going to get the most out of those guys, and we're going to have to be ready to go. Um, and then last but not least, Southfield Arts and Tech. You've had a history, you have had a rivalry with these guys. I mean, last year you went to Southfield, won over there. Um, talk about the Warriors in your eyes a little bit. Man, those guys are really good, too. I mean, that's the thing. Like, you talk about the OAA Red and how strong that is. I, I really do believe it is, like, the best top-to-bottom conference you know, you're going to see in the state. And our crossover games being Groves and Southfield and then playing Chippewa Valley and then the the uh, the extra game against Oak Park that we picked up, which wasn't a league crossover. It just happened to be, in a, you know, a league opponent that we added. So you look at it, and, like, gosh, there's not any breaks here. But, like, you said Southfield, man, they're really good. Isaiah Marshall, you heard about him as a seventh grader, as an eighth grader, and he has lived up to every bit of it, in my opinion. I watched him in track, beating our receivers in the 100-meter dash as a quarterback, and he's gotten bigger, he's gotten stronger, and I think his arm talent kind of it just pops for, on the tape when you put it in. So, like, And as a senior leader, I, I know he's going to be ready to go playoffs so we got to make sure that you know we do our job containing him because he has weapons all around him and uh, they are very very talented i know they're going to be very very hungry so before i let you go coach um what is your expectations this year heading into the season obviously when you look at west bloomfield a lot of expectations for the lakers um I forgot any change in uniforms at all. You're going with the regulars, same thing. It should be should be the, pretty much the same as last year. So 
we only have three home games, uh, yeah, I know. two home games. So, um, we're going to have like a little bit of variety for the home jerseys. And then we don't know, I guess yet who's going to be the designated home team at Wayne state. At least I haven't been told. So that'll kind of play a little bit of a factor into how we piece all that together. But a lot of that, we leave it up to the captain. So right. we'll if you're the home team, my suggestion, wear black. You know what I mean? That's my suggestion. That's that's what the kids want to do. <laughs> <laughs> but we might be wearing the, the all whites, which I call the stormtrooper uniforms. But mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, sort of yeah. like that. You know, you get the Star Wars trend and all that. Um, before I let yeah. you go, before I let you go, Coach, um, what is your expectation this year for West Bloomfield? You know, like I, I kind of alluded to it earlier, we we set a high bar for ourselves, and we have, you know, we have our team goal. We want to win the league. We want to win the district and regional, and hopefully be in a spot where we compete for the state. But that all starts, you know, in a couple of weeks, and really, really, it started a while ago. We got in the weight room, we got conditioning, but you know, we have to. I guess build brick, brick by brick and block by block over double days and, you know, the practice leading up to Chippewa Valley to make sure that we're in a position to do that. Uh, you can be blessed with all the talent in the world, but that puts, I guess, the weight of performance and expectations on us, you know, so like we don't get it done. It's, it's solely on uh, our shoulders. Like we just got to make sure that we're ready to go. And you know, if we are, you know, football can be a weird game. Like you need to be, talented you need to be schemed up right and at some point during the year you need the ball to bounce your way you know i guess metaphorically so we just hope that we're in a position where if it does bounce our way we can capitalize west blue coach jack hilbers um thank you for joining us on the podcast this week um i'll see you at media day coming up um so good luck this season thanks sam appreciate you buddy yep me too okay now we're gonna take yeah. a we're gonna take a commercial break here and we're gonna we're gonna talk to an, to um another football coach here on right now Welcome back to Only Now here. I'm Sammy Tamin here. We got the coach at Detroit Colts, Chris Frazier here. Coach, um, thank you for co- joining us this week here on the pod. Well, I appreciate you having me. It's, uh, it's nice of you to support uh, high school athletics and specifically the OAA. Last year, you guys went 7-3 last year, 2-2 two and two in the blue. Um, you lo- I mean, like you made the playoffs um, four times in six years. Um, you lost 58 zip to Southfield. Um, so talk about recap last season. Obviously, when you look at the stats, offensively you allowed 100. You scored 174 points. Defensively, you allowed 154 points. But minus against two teams, it was overall really 44 points. Yeah, I mean last year we had a pretty uh, solid defense. Uh, I think Coach Tom does a really good job of getting uh, the boys ready to play and you know try and stop the opponents. You know best. To, that's the you know things they do, and then you know offensively we were we were blessed to have uh, Darius Whiteside. He was a you know a pretty good player for us for three years, and uh, you know he's going on to Grand Valley. So you know we kind of took advantage of some uh, of some situations. We made some big plays at the end of games, and you know we we pulled some of the close games out, which helped us you know get those seven wins. Um, talk about of course you know when you look at last season, of course um, making the um. I mean, like nineteen and nine the last two years. Um, talk about the success that you guys have been, especially on the defensive side of the football. People look at Troy. I mean, like the defense really told the story for Troy. I mean, like you know, when you look at it, obviously the hundred fifty four points, but you got to take away the um the forty, take away at least like about a hundred of those points. He really only allowed forty four points last year. Um, talk about your defense. Well, our defense has been uh, really good. I think. Uh... You know, we uh, we do some things, and you know, Troy kind of knows his limitations. We're we're never going to have, you know, thirty big linemen that are two hundred fifty, three hundred pounds. So we have to do some things to take advantage of of what we have. So we we try to tailor our defense to to fit to uh, our kind of quicker, undersized kids. So we we take advantage of that, and uh, you know, we know we can't sit still and sit there because in the end, if it's physics, if if our kids are 180 pounds and the, the offense is 300 pounds, you know, if we stand there and don't move, then, you know, we're probably going to get blown backwards. So we try to do some things to, to move our guys around and make them moving targets. And, you know, and then we've also been lucky enough to have some kids in the back end at corner that can take away the other team's receivers. Like Darius is, was, like I said before, a really good athlete for us and he could match up against the best receiver. And then we were lucky enough to get a, a freshman in two years ago, Jalen Peacock, who could kind of do the same thing on the other side. So we really didn't need to worry about, you know, the corners as much because they could they could do their own thing. Talk about Jalen. I mean, obviously, 
you know, I've seen Jalen on the basketball court. Um, he's been he's one of your best def- defensive backs in the secondary. So talk about how important Jalen's going to be heading into this year for you guys. Well, I think Jalen had a really good role model the last two years in Darius. And the biggest biggest thing about Darius is that he didn't really – he didn't care about being the man. He didn't care about the image or anything like that. He just did his work and practiced every day. And, and Jalen kind of saw that and, and kind of took some of those, those lessons he learned from Darius. And, you know, he learned that he had to grind every day. So Jalen's going to kind of hopefully fit into those, you know, maybe like leadership by example kind of person where he can, he can lock down his side of the field and then the younger kids can, can learn from him so it's kind of like that pay it forward mentality where one person teaches one and then the next teaches the next so we're looking for Jalen to step up in his junior year to be to be more of a leader and being the one that is pushing the kids to work harder of course you look at your offensive line your lineman situation of course you got a lot of linemen coming back a lot of proven linemen coming back so talk about some impact players up front you know that would um you know heading into the season well, so offensively, uh, we've got two returners coming back. Uh, our center's name is uh, Nick Stromberg. Mm-hmm. He's a, he's a wrestler. He's an undersized kid, but he's he's one of those tough wrestlers who, you know, he never cares if the kid outweighs him by 150 pounds. He's just going to stick his nose in there and he'll he do what he can. And the you know thing that you never really talk about is he doesn't make too many bad snaps. So he just the ball gets back to the quarterback and we don't have to think about it, which is which is one of those things you never think about until it goes wrong. So we're blessed to have that. He's also a really, really smart kid who, who, you know, you teach something one time to him and he knows the calls, he knows what to make. So we're very lucky to have him, you know, coming back as center. And then the other returner we have is a junior. His name is Lucas Tick. And he was a sophomore puppy last year on varsity and was kind of feeling his way around varsity and started to really, really become an impact player for us. And unfortunately got hurt against Athens, but, uh, we're looking for big things from him this year as well. Um, when you look at, of course, your offense, obviously you did return a quarter to a very good quarterback in Parker Brandenburg. Um, how has Parker's development been? I mean, last year, you know, he had a nice year. So how has he been handling the controls this off season? Well, Parker's uh, he's doing his he's doing his part. He got voted captain at the end of last year, so he'll be a captain this year. He, he's one of those kids that shows up to everything. He shows up and he's willing to work and he's willing to do some things. He's He's really athletic, and he, he, you know, he, as the season went on, he went from kind of being hesitant to run when plays broke down to, to being, you know, pretty important for us as the year went on, just making those plays out of the backfield that weren't scripted, you know what I mean? The, the pocket would be collapsing, he'd go pick up six yards and get a first down and move the change, and those are, you know, those are kind of big plays during the season. And then our other quarterback, Noor, he's been, He's been one of those weight room warriors. He's he's worked out a lot, and he's you know he's constantly on Parker's heels, pushing him because you know not only making Parker better, but he wants to challenge for some snaps this year as well at the quarterback. Um, talk about obviously your running back Nolan Block. I mean, like obviously when you look at you had his you had you had you had him um, Ethan last year as well. Um, talk about how Nolan's been doing this off season. So uh, you know having Nolan. It'll be his fourth year on varsity. Um, you know, as a freshman, way back in the playoffs against uh, Bloomfield Hills, he scored three touchdowns, and you know, from there, he's just kind of uh, taken off. He he was lucky enough to play with his brother for two years, and last year was his first year alone. So uh, he, you know, he actually got named captain last year. So you know, the kids kind of valued his leadership skills as a junior, and. You know, this being a senior year, I, you know, I can't believe it's already been four years together, but he's just one of those kids that you can line him up anywhere, offensively, defensively, he'll give you everything he has. You know, he works out all the time. He does, you know, he shows up to everything. So he he does exactly what every coach would want. He does anything you ask. He's smart. You know, he has over a 4.0 in the classroom. So he's just one of those kids that, you know, you're lucky to have. Talk about any other impact players. Obviously, when you look at Troy, I mean, like, we've already broken down a lot of them, but any other impact players that OA Nation needs to know about? We were lucky. Uh, we've been lucky the last three, four, five years to kind of get some kids into the football program from other other sports. We've had some baseball players come in, you know, a couple years ago. We had a couple of baseball kids. Jake Wiseman came play quarterback for us for a year. And, 
you know, we've been lucky and last year we got lucky. We got a, um, a running back from the soccer program named Drew Oliver. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it took Drew a couple of weeks to kind of remember football from middle school and kind of figure out the offense. But once he kind of figured it out and became comfortable, he started to get more and more play time. And by the end of the year, he was, you know, starting for us and, you know, he's come to everything this summer. So we're lucky to have him. So returning both him and Nolan in the backfield will help, you know, they kind of know what they're doing. They, they kind of set the tempo for the uh, younger kids. So offensively, we're lucky to have him. And, you know, defensively, we've got some defensive linemen returning. Uh, we kind of already talked about Noah or he is the, he's the, you know, the second quarterback right now. Mm-hmm. So he's coming back as a defensive lineman. De Niro Prince, another multi-sport kid we got from basketball. He's coming back as a defensive lineman. Okay. Ben Dudas coming back, you know, so we got some defensive linemen coming back and again, they're, they're, they're just, they are who they are. They're not going to be 300 pounds. They're just going to be they're, they're You know, they're going to be athletic 180 pound, 190 pound kids that do their thing. One thing I'm a little worried about when I look at you guys here is the linebacking spot in the, in the, in the wide receiving spot. So any players, you know what I mean? To mention in those areas. Well, I think, uh, you know, you kind of hit on the head with linebacker losing, losing a two-year starter at middle linebacker and a captain, Ray Mazwaku, you know, that hurts. He, he was a kid that knew all the, all the defense, made all the calls. So losing a kid like that hurts. So someone's going to have to step up into that role. I don't know. I don't know what's, uh, who's going to do it yet, but, uh, you know, we've been working. There's been kids rotating there, and we got a couple younger kids, uh, a senior in Christian Johnson who's trying to push for that spot. So, you know, we'll kind of see how that shakes out. And then, like you said, on receiver, we got a couple kids graduating. We already talked about Darius, but Bryce Parker was one of those kids that lined up, you know, every play, played the inside receiver for us. So someone's going to have to take that spot as well. So, yeah, you know, high school football is what it is. You get the kids for at most four years, and then someone else has got to cycle through. So someone else has got to take their spot. Look at your program strength. Obviously, you got the JV program. You got the JV team over there at Troy. Um, you know, when you look at the enrollment, you know, Look at the enrollment. How's the how's program strength going for you guys? So number one, I, in my opinion, I think school enrollment is kind of archaic way to look at things. It's just you know we might have a lot of kids at Troy, but we have kids that are interested in other things, which are fine. So we've been lucky the last couple of years to get classes of twenty twenty five kids, and you know, kind of like I said before, our, our kids are aren't the the biggest kids in the world, but we're lucky to have you know, last, last couple of years, a bunch of athletes in the program. So, you know, we just got, we have, we have, and we got to make do with what we got. Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk your schedule. I mean, obviously you look at, of course, you look at, of course, last season, you have a lot of teams on there. Um, on your non-conference, you're playing three or four teams you played last season. Um, talk, so I'm going to break down your non-conference, but we talk a division opponents. So I want to get your thoughts on each of the teams that you're playing this year. Um, mm-hmm. Let's start with your week one opponent, which is um, Macomb Las Cruz North. Um, you know, um, talk about them a little bit because last year you guys had a little struggle with them a year ago. I mean, went in fourteen three last year. Well, number one, you know, last year was the first time we played them and we went to their place. It was, uh, it was, you know, sometimes it's kind of fun playing these teams, the teams that you don't necessarily see. So we went there, and and you you're right, we struggled. We uh, we moved the ball decently the first two you know, two quarters, but then something would happen. We threw interception on a good play by their safety. I think number 12, he made a great play on the ball. Um, you know, we fumbled a, a ball or, or two in there and then, you know, fourth quarter came, third quarter came and we just stuck to the ground, ran the ball with Nolan, you know, five, six, seven times in a row and then threw the ball to Darius once or twice. And, you know, we made enough plays to, to get the win. And, you know, the first two games last year, it was kind of like pulling teeth. As I say, it was, some new kids in there and we weren't really clicking and it took us a couple, couple weeks last year to get, to get, to get the engines going. So, mm-hmm. you know, this year we're looking forward to hosting, you know, Lance Cruz North. So they get to come to our place. It's uh, going to be a brand new field of Troy. So it'll be, it'll be cool to experience an opponent that a lot of our fans haven't seen and on a brand new field. Detroit Mumford, you know, speaking of that, we talked earlier a little bit about Mumford. Um, that's your week two opponent. Yeah, last year uh, we, we went down to Mumford, so it was a place we've never been before, and it was one of those weird 5 o'clock starts, and it was one of those days that was like 90 degrees. So, again, that that, that that game felt like pulling teeth. We'd 
you know, we'd run the ball, run the ball, run the ball down the field, and then we'd do something stupid. We threw a pick. We'd run the ball, run the ball down the field. We had a bad snap and turn and fumbled. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it took us a while again last week to to get the engines going, or last year get to get the engines going. But you know, this year again, uh, we get to have them at home, so it's another home game for us, and we get start at seven, which is kind of like mm-hmm. what everyone's used to. So, we're hoping it's not 117 degrees like it was last year, and uh, we're hoping to the offense clicks a little bit uh, more efficiently in week two. Um, as well. Okay, what about Berkeley? I mean, you have them for a crossover. You know that rivalry, you know, between you you guys and the Bears. Um, talk about Berkeley a little bit. Well, Berkeley's always fun to play against. Number one, uh, Sean's a good guy over there, and he, uh, you know, he's he takes his program serious. He works hard over there, but he's also, uh, you know, he's also a, a good guy on, on the field and interactions between the teams. You know, we know Berkeley's going to be a tough team. We, uh, we haven't played them for a couple of years. It's also pretty cool because a couple of my coaches are from Berkeley, so they have connections to the school. They have connections to the coaching staff. So, you know, when there's always – when there's some kind of connection between you and the opponent you're playing, it, it makes for a, a more special evening. Mm-hmm. Um, what about Frazier? You close out the year with Frazier Week 9. So talk about playing the Ramblers Week 9. So, again, another opponent we haven't played in a while, and it's a, a really uh, – you know, one of the best named schools around there, you know, Frazier's a good, good name. So, uh, Frazier's, uh, we're going to go to their place this year. We had them at our place last year. Um, you know, I thought the Frazier was pretty talented last year. We, we did, uh, end up beating them last year pretty well, but, uh, I think they're going to have some players again this year. So it's, it's not one of those, this teams that you ever can overlook. So again, they're, they're the week nine, it's something we close with. So, we're not necessarily focused on them right now, but again, another school that uh, you don't really see often. So you can go, you know, see how some other teams play and see how their coaches coach and pick up something from them. Talk about your division. Obviously, the blue. Um, talk about Oak Park. You know what I mean? Obviously, the Knights coming down from the white division. What's your initial thoughts when you think about Oak Park? Well, you know, uh, we haven't played Oak Park for a couple of years, and the last time we played them, they uh, they they whooped us pretty good. So. The memories I have of Oak Park are going there and getting our booties kicked. So I haven't seen necessarily Oak Park play in the last couple of years. So I don't necessarily know what to expect, but I know they're going to be well coached. I know that they're going to have some, uh, some big linemen probably. I know they're going to have some athletes. Mm -hmm. So they're an opponent where you can't take lightly. You know, they, you know, as I don't know how many years coach has been there, but when you have a coach that's well established, they're going to know what they're doing and they're going to do it well. It's just, you know, it's just a matter of can we execute or are they going to execute better than us? Talk about um, Seahome. I mean, obviously, you know, Seahome with the, with the veer and all that. I mean, like last year, they they put it on you guys. I mean, like, so talk about what um, Seahome brings in your eyes. Well, number one, I think Southfield was probably the most talented team we played last year, but Seahome was a close second. So, like you said, they ran the veer and they, they know exactly what they're doing. They you know, going there, they, they kicked our booties and they left no prisoners. You know what I mean? They, they took care of business and, and offensively they did pretty much what they wanted to do. And defensively they ran their stuff and they ran it well. Like those kids at sea home were well coached. They were strong and they were efficient at what they did. And they were, like I said, probably one of the best two teams we saw last year and they got the win against us, you know, and they deserved every, every ounce of the win. Mm-hmm. Talk about North. Of course, last year you went to Ron Holland and lost nine, nothing last year over there. Um, talk about North Farmington. Well, last year, you got to give it to North Farmington. They, I, I don't have the stats in front of me, but they controlled the ball pretty much the whole game. The fourth or the first quarter, I think we had three offensive plays and North did, you know, they did, they made plays when they had to, they had a couple fourth downs on the first, uh, <laughs> first quarter they went for and they got they had uh, a couple third and longs they converted so they did they made those plays kind of those coin flip plays during the game that kind of win you a game or lose you a game so last year north kind of did what they wanted to us offensively they controlled the ball and then obviously defensively they they stuffed us and we didn't score any points so again it was it was a win for them but it wasn't necessarily a blowout or anything like that so you know this year obviously we're we're going to try to uh, flip the score on 
your rivalry with Troy Athens, obviously, when you look at that rivalry, um, that's my next team here. Um, what's your thoughts on the Red Hawks? Well, you know, they every year they, when I get evaluated at the end of the year, they always ask me things, and I, I tell them simply it's it's more fun to beat Athens than lose to Athens. So, you know, the last couple of years we've won, and it makes for a better night and a better year and a better time walking through Kroger and seeing people. And when you lose to Athens, it makes for a less fun year. So, you know, again, Athens is going to be talented. Coach Cook's last, you know, first year last year, I guarantee the kids are going to be even more ingrained in his system and his kids play hard and they play fair. And so we're looking forward to a, a fun eventful night. Usually the stands are packed. doesn't matter if it's at Athens or Troy. And we're looking for a, you know, a contest where the kids are playing hard, but they're also playing fair. So, uh, you is, know, that's. Mm-hmm. Is, there, is there a trophy game on that one in that rivalry? No, the only trophy we've uh, played for in the last couple of years that I've been around is with Avondale. Mm-hmm. So we haven't the played job, Avondale yep. in, mm-hmm. yeah, in, in a couple of years. So that's the only trophy I know that we play for. Okay. Um, before I let you go, Coach, um, what's your expectations you're heading into the season for Troy? You know, you kind of you get this question every year, and I'm, I'm never going to put, like, I want to win this many, this many. Our biggest expectations are we're going to compete every game, and in the end we're going to see what happens, you know. So we're looking forward to uh, the scrimmage. We're going to compete against Taylor, and we'll see what happens. And then we're looking forward to competing against Lance Cruz North and see what happens. So my expectations is that every kid in the program is going to compete, and we're going to establish that mantra that expectation from day one and if if they can't you know live up to that then someone else is going to take the spot so we just want to compete every play and whatever happens at the end of the game happens at the end of the game troy coach chris frazier um thank you for joining us this week here on the podcast we'll see you at media day um coming up next week so that should be very interesting i'll see you next week and i appreciate you again supporting athletics Thank you very much, Coach. I'm Chris Frazier, Coach Troy Colts here. Um, right now, we're going to take a break here. We're going to talk to Harper Woods Coach Rob Oden here on the podcast. All right, as we wait for our um, next call, um, for Harper Woods Coach um, Rob Oden to call us back here. Um, we're going to break down the um, Farmington girls basketball situation. Of course, Farmington named a new head coach. Um, Nally Nolak takes over the um, gig over at Farmington, um, takes over for Laura Guzman, who's at Troy now. Um so when you look at this hire, obviously with um, Nally Nowak taking over, um, it's a good fit for them. I mean, obviously when you look at the hire there, um, I think when you look at the um, how it's been, um, you know, I think Nowak fits what they like to do. She's in the building. Um, Farmington, I mean, Farmington does have some players coming back. Um, they're in a very capable division. Um, but when you really look at it, um, you know, I mean, like, I think when you look at the division for girls basketball in the blue, I mean, Farmington, it'll be a challenge for them, but we'll see how it goes. Um, we will see how it goes and go from there. All right. We got coach Oden here on the pod here. Um, coach, um, how are you doing today? I'm well how about yourself. I'm good. Um, How's everything been? Of course, um, last season you guys went um, three and six, um, two and three in the white. Um, last season, I mean, you were one and four in your last five games, but very competitive. Um, lost uh, lost to Rochester Girls by a combined nine points. Um, talk briefly, talk about last year for you guys. Um, last year for us was a uh, 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 definitely a learning process. We. It was our first year in the OAA white, and we had to make some adjustments. One, we're playing in the white where all the schools are class A schools. You know, we're a small class B school. We have 750 students. So week in and week out, having to play teams with 1,700, 2,000 students or 90 guys on varsity. The attrition kind of hit us hard. Uh, injury book kind of took us out early. And we kind of limped to the finish to a three or six start. I mean, a two or three or six finish. So last year was a tumultuous season for us, overcoming injuries, getting acclimated to a new league, and um, having a very young team. We only graduated five seniors from last year's team. So we was a young football team last year as well. 
Talk about, of course, last season when you look at, of course, being a young team, you know, going through a new league. You know, I mean, last few years, I know you were 22 and 16 since 2018. Um, you know, it, it had to be really unusual. You know what I mean? Like for Harper, for you guys to miss the playoffs last year, very unusual. Very unusual. In my 23 years of coaching, I think it was the first season that I did not make the postseason. So, you know, with that being a driving force this off season, I think, you know, the team is kind of taking it personal and 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 are taking the necessary steps to make sure that it never happens again. So definitely a different kind of experience for us last year not being in a tournament. Um, talk about of course also last year, you guys, you know, your enrollment. Um, you would have been in D two last year for the playoffs, but this year, if you get in the postseason this year, I think you're in D three or D four. I mean like Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're in Division Four. We're okay. a Division Four team throughout. What okay. happened last year was our enrollment numbers were skewed because we have a uh, virtual program called Harper Academy. Okay. And for some reason, in the MHSAA numbers, they counted our virtual students. Our virtual students never enter the district. You know, it's a hundred percent virtual. They don't come to the school building. Mm-hmm. We can't use them as athletes. And in no season previous had they been counted in our enrollment. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, like. For some reason, last year, they counted almost 500 students. They had our enrollment like 1250 when we we're really 750 because never do they count our virtual population. Like, we, if we seen these kids face-to-face, we wouldn't know who they are. Mm-hmm. They just take classes online and it's through our program, which was uh, used to be called Diploma for Success, but Harper Woods bought it, mm-hmm. bought bought that school, and um, for some reason they lumped all the numbers together. Mm-hmm. So if you look at um, 2018, 19, 20, Division and four. 21, right, we were lower in the division, yeah, mm-hmm. because those students, for some reason, not only did they count them, they refused to make a change until this upcoming off season. So we just kind of had to go through it. Mm-hmm. But because we were playing a class A schedule anyways, mm-hmm. in the regular season, it really didn't matter to us. Yeah. And obviously let's look at your team. Obviously when you look at a course, um, Harper Woods, they are known for talent. Um, obviously when you look at the pioneers and there is a lot of proven experience in this team, in this program. So, we're going to break down the positions. Um, obviously, you look at quarterback, you know, being a very important position. So, when you look at quarterback, um, you got Simon Buford and Nate Rushdale, according to my notes, um, as the two quarterbacks for you guys. Yep. Uh, Stefan is a returning starter. He started last year for us. He's a program kid. He's been in the program four years now. He has a very distinct skill set. He's probably considered to be a dual threat athlete. I think uh, away from the ball, if need be, he's one of our two or three best wide receivers as well. So when Nate does play, he's not out of the game. You know, he's just at a different position. Nate is the young gunslinger. You know, he's a quarterback by trade. He's been born to be a QB. He's the first to arrive, the last to leave. He's a student of the game. He uh, He's very meticulous and um, – He's a, a a Canadian, you know, so mm. he had to make the adjustments as a freshman to American football. You know, field is not as wide. It's not as long. Mm-hmm. It's, it's four downs and not three and so on and so forth. So he spent his freshman year kind of making those adjustments mm-hmm. to American football. And I think he's hitting the ground running right now. So. Having them both has kind of been like an iron sharpens iron type of thing. They push each other every day. Their relationship is great. And I think whoever comes out of the battle, both guys will be better off for it. Um, Talk about your running back spot. Obviously, you look at um, you look at you got some very good running backs. So talk about your running back situation. Um, Last year was kind of a two headed monster. We had a sophomore, uh, Kobe Bailey. Mm-hmm. And then we had Junior Dwight Houston. 
both of them guys kind of fed off each other. Uh, it's kind of an inside outside thunder and lightning kind of approach. Kobe is more of the scat back. You know, he does a lot of the perimeter stuff, the outside zones and, and those runs. He's a threat to, you know, take the ball a distance every time he touches it. And then Dwight is kind of more of the downhill thumper. He's, he's the in between the tackles guy. He's a lot, you know, he's heavily involved in our screen game and he's heavily involved in our interior run game. So depending on the play, the situation and those things, you may get a little bit of both or whoever has the hot hand in the second half may be the feature guy. So they kind of uh, do a great job feeding off each other. How's your wide receiving game? Obviously, I know there's been a lot of, you know, I've watched the seven on seven stuff and all that, but um, any players OI Nation needs to know about when it comes to your wide receivers? Absolutely. Our receiver core is explosive. I think it's probably one of the best units on our team. You got, uh, you got, Jacob Oden, my son, mm -hmm. he, he plays our X Y receiver, so he he's he's the stretch the field guy. He's the big play guy, and then you have Romani Howells, our slot receiver, heavily involved in the kick and punt return game. He is uh, I think he had nine special teams touchdowns last year. He's explosive. He's a four three forty guy, you know, a two hundred meter guy in the state. He's a track kid through and through. I'm um, getting ready for the Junior Olympics right now, basically, mm -hmm. actually. And um, so he's 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 a, a lightning in the bottle kind of kid. And then we have the incoming freshman, my nephew, Dakota Garant, who's going to take the world by storm now that he's here. You know, he has four offers already, and he's 14, coming into the eighth, ninth grade. He'll play in the slot. And then we have a combination of guys – um, Joshua Peak is a rising senior. He, he's a big frame, big body kid, 6'2", 180-pound kid. He'll catch a lot of balls for us. We got Yassine Milton, another slot receiver. He's very dynamic with the football in his hands as well. And then we have a big tight end, you know, and Nigel Robinson. So Nigel will do the short and intermediate work, box guys out, and help us set the edge in the run game. I think that receiving core is one of our strengths, and it's kind of shown this summer as we were in passing league, and they were performing pretty well. How's up front? I mean, obviously the offensive of defensive line. You know, how's your defense looking? Mm -hmm. Both linebackers and then defensive secondary. Um, how's your defense looking? Any players up front in the linebacking corner the secondary? I think our defensive uh, defensively, they're looking. Our back seven is looking polished because. Like I said, we were young last year. We had 19 starters returning on this team. So, and with, uh, I think it's uh, 10 starters back on defense, they're looking fast, physical, and, and ready to get after it. Up front, you know, a few new names. Bryant Weatherspoon will set the edge for us at defensive end. He's a P5 recruit. Um, got a couple MAC offers already. He, he'll he be probably one of our dominant defensive ends or our edge rushers inside our best tackle is javon jones he's a sophomore started as a sophomore he'll be a junior this year he'll handle the duties of playing you know and stopping the run inside those are probably our best two defensive linemen our backers all returned from a year ago so we got four-year starter senior captain you know willie powell in there with junior matthew mccraw both of them are downhill thumpers, both are about six foot, six one, two twenty in there. So they're solid run fitters and, and can play and develop into the pass as well, dropping the coverage. And then our secondary all returns. So, you know, like I said, with Jacob at free safety and Keontae Wilson and Brandon Houston and all of those guys back there, they've been together three years. So, you know, their communication and you know camaraderie is, is is through the roof right now. That defense is right now they're humming. They're they're performing on all cylinders. The biggest thing for us will be to avoid the injury bug and kind of stay healthy. Talk about keeping these guys upright. Talk about program strength. Obviously when you look at um how's the J V program looking over there at um Harper Woods? Mm-hmm. Well program strength the strength of our program is our culture. 
you know, guys come there because they want to be blue collar. They want to work hard. They want to be coached hard. They want to be told the truth. They want to be great in the classroom and they want to be elite on the field. So the culture that we've created the last few years is, is what sustains us. Junior varsity program has grown. They have almost 50 kids in that program and they've been strong, averaging seven wins a year the last few years. And they'll be a strong unit this year as well. Our middle school program is, is, hasn't lost a game in three years, so they're a solid bunch that will be coming to us in future years. So all in all, I think the program is really, really trending upward. But the culture that's been created, you know, it's a player-led program, and those guys kind of follow and feed off of each other. So establishing that was priority number one for us. And then building that will probably be behind that. So those are the things I look at when I talk about program strength. Mm-hmm. Um, talk about your schedule. I mean, like, obviously, when you look at the schedule, so I'm gonna. So what I do with all the other coaches when I talk to is give your thoughts on each team. You know what I mean? What's your initial thoughts? You know, we're gonna start with the non-conference before we go into the white. Okay. So let's talk. Um, let's start with your week one matchup, Stony Creek. Um, talk about the Cougars a little bit in your eyes. Um, big up front, physical. You know, they want to establish the run and dominate the line of scrimmage. Uh, depth, plenty of depth. I think it's almost 90 guys on the team out there. I think that they are well coached. They're extremely well disciplined. I think we'll have our hands full week one, but I look forward to the matchup. Lake Orion, week two. <clears throat> Haven't seen them much. I've seen them a couple times on film. But they uh, give you a lot to prepare for. They're, they're, they're limitless in formations. They give you 20-plus formations, motions, and shifts. So you definitely have to be on your game when we get ready to play them because you don't want to be out flank. You don't want to be out of position. You don't want any of those things to happen. So, you know, you, you, you better have – you know, be putting your best foot forward. But Lake Orion is, uh, you know, Chris Bell does a great job with them guys. So they got a champion in pedigree over there as well. Clarkston. Clarkston, man. I mean, the tradition of the program speaks for itself. Uh, what can I say? We know they want to run the ball. We know that, you know, in years past, you know, I'm just thankful that the running back, you know, has graduated. Ethan Clark. You know, <laughs> oh my God, watching him last year in scout film was amazing. You know, I became a fan actually. Uh, um, so Clark's is big, the physical, the strong, the athletic. They're extremely well balanced, and I think that's the thing with Clarkson is they can throw it just as well as they run it. So you have to be disciplined. You have to be poised and under control so that you don't get outflanked or outmatched. But they are consistently one of the top 10 or 15 teams in the state, and that'll be a heck of a matchup for us in week eight going on the road out there. Roseville. Uh, uber talented, you know, probably um, outside of Southfield will probably have the best set of skill guys we'll see all year. You know, we've been seeing them guys and, and from afar this summer in several of the seven on sevens and caps we've been to. They have been at as well. So we kind of watch it from afar, but they're uber, they're super athletic, they're fast, they're aggressive, you know, and, and they too are, are pretty well coached. So they kind of give us some things. And then they have the dynamics of a running dual threat quarterback as well. So we got to make sure we can contain those guys and keep them bottled in to eliminate the big plays. Mm -hmm. um, let's go to division now. Um, you're in the white mm -hmm. course. Um, let's talk Bloopy Hills first. What's your initial thoughts on the Blackhawks? Uh, a program on the rise. I think they're, they, you know, watching them on scout film last year prior to playing them, you can see the, uh, the growth every week. You see them getting better every week. I think this year they'll perform a little better than last year. Um, last year, I thought that they could, you know, match teams score for score offensively. They had a dynamic offense. I thought last year defense was kind of the Achilles heel. They was giving up points and chunks. I think, you know, I'm pretty sure that's been an emphasis for them this offseason. So 
I'm pretty sure it'll be a, a, a solid matchup for us when we get to that week. Rochester. Rochester is uh, balanced, well coached. Uh, showed us a lot in that game last year. You know, one of them never said die, never quit teams. We had a lead a couple of times in that game. We ended up losing it late. But, you know, those guys do a heck of a job preparing their kids for games, and I think they're extremely well coached. I think that uh, Rochester kind of gives you some non-traditional formations and unbalance and, and a couple of things that you've got to make sure that you reiterate with your guys, else you'll be giving up big plays because you're extremely outflanked by the formations. Farmington. Farmington is new to the white. I haven't seen him at all yet, you know, but – in, in, in the OAA, I liken it to the SEC. You know, there is no week off here. You got to play your best football every week. And I know to get to the white from the blue, they had to, you know, kick some tails. They had to beat some teams. The best team came up a division. So I know they're going to be well coached. I know they can play the, because they wouldn't have brought them up if they couldn't. So I haven't really had a chance to see them guys yet. But I look forward to, you know, checking them out and scouting the film and getting ready to prepare to play them. Groves. Groves is uh, big and physical. Um, uh, a lot like Rochester, they give you multiple formations and shifts. And with Groves, you got, you, you, you got to maintain discipline because what we found out last year is with all of the pre-snap chaos the motions the shifts the adjustments you can easily become outflanked or you can blow an assignment if you're not careful in reading your keys groves does a great job on the offensive line they got a pretty good unit i think they got a a five-star kid up there playing tackle ball yep. he's, he's 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 elite we played him last year um Coach does a great job preparing them guys and coaching them guys. And that's definitely one that we look forward to. It's kind of circled on our calendar because we feel like last year, Groves and the Rochester, we both we let them both get away. Mm-hmm. And then both get away. And then the last one, A and T. That has to be circled on your schedule. A and T is forever circled on our schedule because prior to coming to the OAA, that was our sister or brother school. You know, we trained in the off season together. We spent countless amount of hours just preparing together, not knowing that one day we would be in the same league. And them guys, I think between the two teams, there's almost 30 kids that play youth football together, including my son who play, you know, I, the marshals are our next door neighbors. We share a driveway. So, you know, Jacob and Isaiah have been together since they were six years old. Mm-hmm. So playing them is always kind of like a family reunion and, you know, preparing for them is always difficult. One, because they probably had the most dynamic set of wide receivers or skill guys, period, in the state. But also because the teams are so, so familiar with one another from all the time spent together in the previous off seasons. Mm-hmm. And then the players having played youth football together, know each other's strengths and weaknesses. So you have to be on your game to play South Hill because if you're not, you know, they have the ability to score 40, 50, 60 points on. Mm-hmm. So you're going to have to be ready to go. I think Isaiah is one of the top quarterbacks in the Midwest and he's playing at that level mm-hmm. right now. Um, game is circle for us because like I said, it'll be a back and forth opportunity for us to show if we can finish. You know, we kind of use the nose games as a measure of rod for our program. We need to take those next steps. Before I let you go, Coach, what is your expectations this year, Coach? Um, I mean, truthfully, I think if we can avoid the injury bug and, and play the way that we're capable of playing, we, we, we plan on making a deep run into the state playoffs. You know, you know I could see us making it to four field, but a lot of things have got to go our way. We have that kind of team. I, I'm super confident in the coaching staff. I am 
I got 21 seniors that's been in the program for three and four years. So we got the necessary leadership. We have all the intangibles this year. We don't have any excuses. We just got to get it done. Harper Woods coach, I'm Rob Oden. Thank you for joining us on the podcast this week. I will see you at Media Day. Absolutely. Yep. Okay, now everybody... Okay, now everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Uh, make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Um, keep an eye on the blog. Um, and I will see you all next week. Everybody take care. God bless. And I'll see you all next week. God bless all.